Mr. Doug LaMalfa. Uh, thank you to my or practically neighbors, the gentleman from Washington here. Um, I appreciate the time tonight. Uh, indeed, what do we know so far about the Green New Deal? It's more like a green pipe dream. It would lead to a total government takeover of just about every aspect of our lives. Now, it's interesting to watch since the deal was proposed not that many days ago. My colleagues on the other side of the aisle, many of them are starting to back away from it. Starting to see, it was 67 co-authors on that. Yet we're seeing uh, some start to back away saying, well, this isn't really the dream or the deal. It's more of an aspiration. Well, by the time you freaked out half the country with uh, these ideas that you put into legislation, maybe we need a little more heads up on what really is the goal here. Some of the, some of the guarantees in it. A government paycheck for those unwilling to work. Is that really in there? What are we talking about here? The cost of this implementation, $93 trillion. Quadruple of what our national debt is right now. The cost will be passed on, of course, too, as always, to the taxpayer, to families, to those struggling, especially middle-income folks, who could see their energy bills already going up from already at a high point to an additional $4,000 annually per family. We should really have our supporters of this bill benefit from the lessons learned in California on the high-speed rail boondoggle. That tripled in a short amount of time soon after it was barely approved $10 billion by the taxpayers to a nearly $100 billion project, all under the guise of saving greenhouse gases. Except during the construction of high-speed rail in California, it'll make a whole bunch of greenhouse gases with the equipment involved, so we're going to plant trees to offset that. Yet at the same time, they're running the rail through hundreds of acres of almond trees in the middle of California that they're supposed to be offsetting. It's a reckless attempt to undermine America's increasing dominance, not just energy independence, but now dominance in an energy around the world. It ignores the basic reality that a lot of what America was built upon were indeed fossil fuels, those uh, known reserves that we have in this country. Now, let's talk a little bit about the Paris Accord. Uh, I think President Trump rightfully withdrew the United States. The goal being greenhouse gas reduction, CO2 reduction. Well, when you look at the stats, who's already leading the way outside of the accord? The U.S. of those Western countries is the only one that's actually reduced its number of CO2 in that amount of time. We're the ones doing it. You know why? Because we have freedom. Because we have the ability to innovate here, to invent the new technology, invent the things that are going to help us to do things better and cleaner into the future. I don't hear a lot of talk in this about new hydropower, which is clean and ready to go anytime you turn on the switch to the gates to allow the turbines to flow. Biomass, in my area of the country, the Western Caucus, my colleagues here, we burn part of the West every year. We should be putting that fuel into clean burning power plants to make electricity, cleaning our forests, making them more fire safe, better for the wildlife, better for the environment, not having all that CO2 go up, Instead, I'm creating jobs in our backyard to give people to work from cleaning up the over-inventory the U.S. Forest Service and BLM has from allowing a forest to run rampant with uh, no management for the last 100 years. These are the things we should be talking about, not this green dream thing. Instead, we're going to hear nothing but climate change, climate change, climate change with solutions that just harness or handcuff the economy, the jobs, and the people of this country inside this chamber and in the real world out there where people actually produce things. We need to focus on the things that we know can work, producing energy with hydropower, yes, with nuclear power, no emissions, with biomass, help clean that inventory that burns hundreds of thousands of acres every year of forest land, and put it to work for us. That is what we're going to be successful at because the United States is always number one in developing the new technology, the new ways to do things cleaner, better, more efficiently instead of handcuffing our economy and that innovation and exporting it somewhere else. I do agree 
with my colleagues that have spoken here tonight and in uh, sending the message that we need to strongly oppose this bill and get back to something that actually works for the working people of this country. Mr. Newhouse, I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. LaMalfa. I appreciate very much your sharing with us your thoughts and California's thoughts about 